thank you very much, dear Georgi, uh, for the introduction. And uh, I'm happy to present the Master of Digital Health, or MDH, at uh, Degendorf Institute of Technology, which is based at the European Campus of Berlin, which is the international uh, campus uh, where um, all study programs are taught in English. I'm Georgi Chotikan, professor and the head of this Digital Health Masters. So as an introduction, uh, what is digital health? Perhaps uh, still uh, deserves a very quick um, uh, introduction. Uh, uh, WHO defines digital health as the field of knowledge and practice associated with um, uh, any aspects of adopting digital technologies to improve health from inception to operations. And this is a quote from the uh, one of the very recent uh, global documents that WHO published the strategy on digital health report 2020-2024. So it is a broad umbrella term, as we say, which, which covers the use of modern information and communication technologies in medicine and healthcare that encompasses e-health, uh, as well as developing areas such as the use of advanced computing sciences uh, for example, in the field of big uh, health data, in genomics, and in artificial intelligence. Um, this is the global scope of digital health as we teach it and as we, um, uh, we adopted this classification in our course. So as you can see, it includes quite, quite a lot of different uh, subdomains of different chapters, ranging from digital health records or electronic health records and digital health information systems, through telehealth, telemedicine, uh, to mobile health and digital therapeutics, but also digital imaging, digital reality, the so-called uh, modern technologies like, such as virtual reality or augmented reality, uh, sensors, wearables, remote monitoring, and all the way to health data analytics and AI and uh, uh, biomarkers, uh, omics and precision medicine. The importance of digital health nowadays cannot be overemphasized. Um, there, there is uh, very significant challenges uh, uh, that healthcare systems are facing around the world. And those challenges are associated with aging populations, with uh, a growing proportion of the elderly people living with one or more than one chronic conditions, as well as with uh, epidemics and other public health emergencies, such as the COVID-19 pandemic, with growing healthcare costs that uh, are expected to uh, have reached uh, 11 trillion dollars globally uh, this year, which is uh, already more than 10% of the global world product, gross world product, so called global GDP, as well as with the shortage of the healthcare workforce and, of course, with the growing expectations of informed citizens for, for better care and for more virtual care or more digitalized care. And because of that, it should not be a surprise that the digital transformation of healthcare is currently a hotspot of policy, practice, research, and innovation worldwide, with tens of thousands of new jobs uh, coming up. Just to illustrate how important is digitalization of healthcare right now as we speak here in Germany, uh, this is just um, an extract from uh, one of the presentations of uh, our colleague, uh, Professor De Bartin, that shows that in the past, um, in, the, in the three years between 2019 and 2022, uh, Bundestag, the parliament of the Federal Republic, has passed 28 uh, legislative acts, 28 laws with relation to digital health, including six laws that are exclusively focusing on digital health. Uh, we talk here about the so-called uh, Krankenhaus Zukunftsgesetz, the Future Hospital Act, that is going to invest uh, more than 4.3 billion euros in um, digitalizing hospitals in Germany, about uh, the uh, another uh, legislative act, another law that provides the possibility here in Germany uh, among the first, uh, actually, countries uh, in, uh, in Europe and beyond uh, for digital health applications to be officially accepted by the regulators and uh, to, be re to, to become prescribable and reimbursable applications. So this is quite an important move. There is also uh, the electronic uh, uh, nationwide 
personal health record, the so-called elektronische Patientenakte, which is being rolled out uh, throughout the uh, uh, nation uh, right now as we speak. The telemedicine has uh, jumped very significantly during the pandemic, as you probably know, or you have heard, just like elsewhere in the world. Just pay attention to this figure. The use of video Sprechstunde, as we say here in Germany, the uh, electronic or virtual visits, has grown, has uh, increased by 1,370% in Germany during, compared to pre-pandemic time. If there were only 168 practices who offered telemedicine back in 2019, already in 2020, there were more than 31,000 of such practices. So all that basically uh, explains uh, the importance of digital health, not only internationally, globally, uh, because as we mentioned already, the World Health Organization issued this strategy and the World Health Organization calls for um, calls to all member states to develop uh, strategies of digitalizing their healthcare systems. And such uh, documents continue to be developed and published right now as we speak. Your humble servant, Professor Chaldikian, is also participating in one such um, guidance of, uh, that will be published soon this year by the World Health Organization on how to digitalize uh, health systems and health services. Because of that, of course, we uh, should understand that there will be high, uh, hardly more demanded uh, profession in relation to uh, health systems and health services than uh, digital health specialists. And uh, so to these masters, masters of digital health, this is our flagship uh, study program that uh, um, uh, prepares uh, graduates to take over leadership positions and to drive digital transformation of healthcare, both here in Germany as well as around the world. The program is structured in three semesters, spanning over one and a half years, up to 90 European credit points with enrollment. Uh, beginning uh, studies beginning once per year in October. So right now we are enrolling uh, students uh, for entry in October uh, 2022. I have to say that the enrollment period, uh, there is uh, nearly or a little more than one month left for the application period. Uh, as of July 15, the application period will be over. We already have close to 700 applications from around the world, so it is absolutely good um, idea if you would be interested uh, uh, in studying digital health with us at Beckendorf Institute of Technology. Do not hesitate, apply now, because uh, obviously we are limited with the amount of the number of students that we can enroll every year, and the demand is very high. Unfortunately, we can only enroll approximately 10% of our applicants, based, of course, on uh, the uh, application documents. This program features a very strong interdisciplinarity at the um, cross-border and the, at the interface, as we always say, between healthcare and technology. So we enroll both students coming from a health sciences background, such as uh, including and not, but not limited to medical doctors uh, or pharmacists or dentists, uh, or uh, healthcare management specialists. And we also enroll people coming from technical background, uh, such as uh, uh, with uh, a completed bachelor's in computer science, in information science, in IT, and uh, alike. Uh, this program is also super international, uh, like 90% of our um, students uh, are mm, uh, from our um, international students. And all in all, we have more than three quarters of students at European campus at this international range, coming from more than 100 nations around the world. So it is absolutely diverse, uh, very international, and uh, very, uh, very interesting uh, family as we think of ourselves. Uh, the program features a balanced mix of lectures and seminars. Uh, we have been doing a lot of hybrid activities, of course, recently due to the pandemic, understandably. But we also do case studies, we do lab training, and uh, uh, we uh, provide also a project-based training where students are um, uh, working on 
real world digital health uh, applications. They are basically developing uh, digital health uh, projects. This is uh, uh, currently a very important part of our curriculum. And of course, what we're, what we're also, how we are perhaps a little bit different to other study programs, we provide exposure of our, for our students to global digital health community because we are very much engaged with global digital health community. We have collaboration uh, uh, relations uh, and uh, very active ongoing collaboration with a number of European, German, Euro Bavarian, German, European and international um, uh, uh, organizations, such important organizations as, for example, the IPS, if you may have heard of it, uh, Healthcare Information Management Systems Society that has a membership base of more than 150,000 professionals around the world. And it uh, could be uh, mentioned uh, that uh, we, we are quite honored that we are one of the very few, um, if not to say uh, one or two, uh, institutions uh, in uh, uh, Europe and in Germany uh, that uh, have this so-called partner innovation exchange partnership with HIMSS. We're also institutional member to International Society for Telemedicine and Health, European Federation for Medical Informatics, International Medical Informatics Association. So all that obviously provides uh, huge opportunities for all our students to uh, get immersed in the world of uh, digital health. A few words about the curriculum. I will not be um, uh, spending a lot of time here. We call this curriculum convergence and divergence. We uh, provide fundamentals of some, some information about medicine and healthcare for students coming from technical background. And of course, we teach also fundamentals um, in computer science and IT technologies to students who are coming with, with biomedical background. And there is a number of courses in healthcare, in digital health, as well as research and methodology and the so-called soft skills that are done by all. And uh, eventually, the program also diverges uh, with an opportunity to, for all students to specialize either in management and uh, <clears throat> entrepreneurship in digital health or in technological, more tech development of digital health. The career opportunities, we've already said, are uh, enormous and are going to be, there will be, be ever increasing, obviously, demand for digital health specialists. There is absolutely no doubt about that. And the possibilities to work are multiple and in different aspects of uh, digital health development, management and implementation. Uh, ranging from data analytics uh, or software de development for digital health uh, or developing digital health applications and all the way to research to project management in education for regulators at the hospital IT units and others. Most and uh, primarily, uh, first and foremost, uh, we always say that we think of our graduates as of innovators and future leaders in digital health. Um, just a, a slide showing our um, professional um, uh, staff and very, very friendly, very helpful professors uh, working uh, with us, as well as uh, other teachers. Permit me not to mention names separately. That information can also be found on the website. Of course, we collaborate with uh, international big names, as we mentioned. Um, in the domain of digital health, ranging from, let's say, Professor Kalra, who is one of the world uh, leaders in uh, medical health informatics from the UK, from University College in you know, London, to Professor Gupta in India, to Professor Skolnik from the United States, Professor Geddes from Norway, uh, Professor Usumano from Brazil, or Professor Palikarakis from Greece. So we basically, we expose you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, or we expose our students to uh, such a constellation of world leaders in digital health that indeed uh, could be said uh, will probably not be matched elsewhere. This is our uh, collaboration partners, including uh, the societies that we've mentioned, as well as a number of institutions, uh, academia partners elsewhere. Uh, a, a glimpse, a couple of photographs just for you, a glimpse of our digital DigiHealth lab, uh, uh, training with uh, real world applications such as the ergometry uh, visit to real world 
medical center, university medical center in Munich, uh, where we visited before pandemic, obviously, but we look forward to continuing all these field trips. And these are our students in the real world robotic operating theater, quite an uh, unforgettable experience was it for them, I should say. An example of a web lecture, an example of us visiting uh, also major events. Just two months ago, this uh, uh, picture was taken in Berlin at DEMIA, the largest digital health congress. Next week, we are participating as a school with also several students joining us at another major meeting in Helsinki, Finland. So this is also an important part of our activities. Last but certainly not least, I invite you also to check the website of DigiHealth Day, which is our also landmark signature series of educational and scientific events running throughout, basically almost throughout the year, which will culminate uh, on 11th of November with a single day international scientific symposium with also great minds coming and giving talks to our students as well as uh, all other participants. We have approximately 650 uh, attendees uh, already subscribed to the DigiHealth Day. And finally, the website of the uh, program. Uh, please check it if you have not yet. And uh, should you be interested, do not hesitate and do not waste time to apply. Thank you very much. That was my presentation on Masters of Digital Health. And uh, with permission of the moderator, I don't know, you should I proceed already with, uh, <laughs> uh, with uh, next study program that I want to present? Mm -hmm. Yes, feel free, please. Excellent. So this is going to be um, a program also in relation to health sciences and digital uh, technologies in health sciences, but in a little bit different aspect. I hope you can see my presentation. And this is a um, master's program titled in Life Science Informatics. And I'm happy to present this program on behalf of my uh, colleague, our colleague, uh, the uh, coordinator, the head of this master's program, Professor Melanie Kappelman. So this is also a master's program, also uh, running for three semesters, also with the start in winter semester. As you can see, there's a lot of similarities. There is also, just like with all our programs, there is no, basically no uh, tuition fee. There is just a student service fee, 62 euros per semester. I guess that could not probably even be um, uh, skipped. Um, I mean, this information, because really we are tuition uh, free by, uh, by uh, design, as you, as you might know, in majority of study programs, in many study programs at public institutions, so at least in almost all uh, um, uh, states of Germany, are free for all, essentially. This is also taught in English, and it is also a full-time study program. Uh, the admission requirements here are similar, completed studies in either natural sciences or informatics with a Bachelor of Science. Of course, English skills uh, should be at uh, a very high level. We request, uh, require C1 level knowledge of English, um, both uh, in this master's and in MDH Master of Digital Health. Uh, in this master's, there is also a requirement of knowledge of German at the level of A2. In MDH, there is no uh, entry requirement of a German. It has to be also mentioned that uh, students who have completed their previous studies in English, with English as a language of instruction, such as, for example, most of the students coming from um, English speaking or largely English speaking uh, nations, such as uh, India, or Bangladesh, or Pakistan, Nigeria, and of course, also the native English speaking countries, they are usually um, uh, waived the requirement to present a certificate of uh, C1 level of English. Uh, for uh, uh, LS, LSI, Life Science Informatics, there is also an assessment test that needs to be completed. We do not have that in MDH. And uh, for LSI, um, of course, uh, it is uh, good to have some basic knowledge in molecular medicine and some basic knowledge in programming prior to application. The contents of the program is uh, uh, seen here on this uh, screen. 
the focus is in biomedical data analysis and uh, the so-called next generation sequencing. So this is a more specialized study program that focuses specifically in bioinformatics, which means informatics, uh, rather informatics or genomics informatics, uh, uh, with sequencing of, uh, um, of uh, a genome, uh, working with the analysis of genomic data. Uh, we know that there is large amount of data that is gained from decoding of genetic material, and it must be processed and correlated in order to make it usable. And uh, uh, consequently, computer-based analyses identify and analyze genes that are predictive for the prognosis or response to therapy um, uh, of, uh, in a particular disease. This is the essence of life science informatics or bioinformatics or genomics informatics. And so this uh, program requires or is uh, delivers medical and scientific uh, knowledge in combination with application-oriented computer science uh, knowledge. And you can see here a list of modules within that study program, biomedicine for uh, a Bachelor of Science in Informatics, informatics for natural scientists. So again, there is the modules that augment the knowledge, needed knowledge, depending on whether student is coming from informatics or computer science background, or from natural science or health science background. And then there are, of course, modules like informatics, biostatistics, machine learning, data management, data mining, data visualization, uh, life science, bioinformatics, and uh, uh, eventually, of course, uh, master's uh, thesis. Uh, there is practical lab experiences with also field trips in collaboration with uh, University of um, uh, Erlangen, uh, one of the major universities in uh, Bavaria. There's also a collaboration with Institute of Molecular Pathology in Degendorf, uh, where this program is located. Uh, the students also um, get some invited lectures by uh, companies, uh, possibility of virtual lectures as well, or hybrid lectures, uh, uh, especially during uh, or in immediate aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. And um, uh, of course, there is also a possibility to gain some uh, credits through related courses or internship uh, at other universities. So the mobility uh, between different universities is uh, always uh, a, a possibility with all study programs, essentially, at our university, pretty much the same way at, as at many other universities. And a master's thesis can be written either uh, solo by the student or in cooperation with the um, related uh, companies. The career prospects here are mostly around the, uh, uh, as we mentioned, uh, genomics informatics, bioinformatics, and uh, analysis of genomics data. It can be at universities, at pharmaceutical companies, at clinical or scientific research institutions, at specialized bioinformatics or biotech companies, so in a wider, larger biomedical uh, industry, and pretty much as with uh, our, uh, with, with the first masters that uh, we presented, MDH, the, uh, this uh, program also gives an opportunity to uh, excellent graduates to continue uh, doing research with us as a PhD students, there is, of course, uh, a requirement to have uh, another institution as co-supporting, co-supervising institution for a PhD. But I have to mention that we already have, for example, um, if I'm not mistaken right now, we have four and one more coming. So probably all in all, we are going to have in a few months five PhD students, all of them, for example, graduates of our Masters of uh, Digital Health. Okay, so for any questions, of course, uh, uh, we are available. The questions can also be asked uh, uh, directly uh, to uh, the program uh, uh, assistant, uh, Ms. Bredov, Elizabeth Bredov, uh, or uh, via telephone, per email. And of course, our colleagues are also here to support you with uh, answering any of your questions. On that, thank you for your attention, and I will 
stop sharing screen and uh, we'll gladly give it over to my colleague who just joined us, Professor Thomas Spittler. Thank you for your attention.